when life doesn't work out, I've always found God is working out. God's working out a better plan. He's working out something good on my behalf. And even things that the enemy intended to harm my life, I know God can use that and turn it around and use it for the good. Um, it always reminds me of that verse in Proverbs 16, 9. Many plans does a man have in his own heart, but the Lord directs his steps. And that's the tricky part, is we're so talented, we're so gifted by God, that we can force stuff and make things happen. But I've learned, I don't wanna be in anything God's not. I might be here on my own, and God's not really in this. So let's let God's will be the last say in our life. You know, the amazing thing about community, the Bible says that there's wisdom in the multitude of counselors. I, I even love it that at Passion, we break up in groups of three because a, a braid or a strand of three is not easily broken. So there's something about having that three, especially if they're, they have godly wisdom, godly counsel, they're gonna encourage me, lift my head, remind me of who I really am, remind me of things that God has spoken over my life. The greatest way that the enemy could hurt you is by using somebody in your life to hurt you. The greatest way God can bless you is by using somebody to bless your life. You know, it says that David's hiding in the wilderness and he's afraid because Saul wants to take out his life and he's like it's rattled and am I gonna be the king? And Jonathan goes and it's, the Bible says he strengthens David in the Lord. We gotta find people in our life. They're gonna come find us when we're hiding and say, nah, we're not letting this happen. I'm gonna strengthen you. That only happens in community. You know, worship for me is, it's a lifestyle. It's beyond a song and it's definitely beyond a service. So Romans 12 says, therefore I urge you or beseech you brothers in view of God's mercy, present your bodies, present your lives a living sacrifice. He says, this is your true act of worship. So I think I can't worship God better than when I'm a good husband, I'm a good father, I'm a good friend, I'm a good son. My lifestyle has to be my worship. But if, if I just put on podcasts and worship music, but I don't live that stuff out, then am I a true worshiper? Because a true worshiper is not just someone that lifts their hand in praise true worshiper, someone that surrenders their life to the Lordship of Jesus and says, you're in control, here's my life. That to me is true worship. You know, my hope for this next generation of Jesus followers is that they would absolutely leave the law. We're not under the law. We are now under the canopy, the regime, the government of grace. Ephesians 2 8, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourself, that's the law. This is the free gift of God. The law only taught me how bad I am. My prayer for this next generation is that we wouldn't live under shame, we wouldn't live under guilt, we wouldn't live by behavior modification and do-goodisms. That was the law. My prayer is that we fall madly in love with the person, our Savior, Jesus Christ. He is grace.